The new Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Hi, I'm Johnny from Cinema 5D, and I'm here with Grant Petty from Black Magic Design. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm always good. What's the choice in life? <laughs> you know? And actually, we are here today because you have a new product you just announced. Yeah, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And many people asked about this product in the past, of course. I yeah. Mean, we yeah. last talked it was during November in, yes, it in was, Japan. Yes, it was. asked about it. So, what's new about this camera? So, the big thing, um, if you look at it, it uses the same lens mount as the uh, previous model. So, you can use all your lenses. So, um, it's it's physically bigger. But that's because it's got a really large five-inch screen on the back. Because when you're shooting 4K, you need a big screen to focus. We wanted a really good ergonomics, mm -hmm. but also we wanted to accommodate a really large screen. So you've got enough monitoring in it to be able, you know, just you need portability. It's nice to rig, but I think it's cumbersome. Okay. So you want to be able to operate without rigging. So the design was somewhat driven by the ergonomics, the big screen, but also we want to dramatically improve audio. That was the other thing as well. It's dominated on the right-hand side by these multifunction controls. The screen dominates the back. It runs Ursa operating system, by the way. Um, and on the other, on the front and the side is connections and audio. Okay, so let's just go through because again, everything is new basically. Yeah, and, yeah, um, very it's, new. it's very, very, it's extremely comfortable to hold, I, I have cool. to say. It grew up, of course, in size. Maybe it doesn't fit the pocket itself anymore, but yeah. it fits my hand very well. We, some of the guys <laughs> joked internally, we said, well, it was pocket battleships, and that was still pretty big, so hey, we'll be okay. You know, obviously it's a 4K sensor and it's uh, four thirds in size, so we've got okay. very little, I think there's no uh, crop factor at all. Um, we've got 13 stops that don't have grain, so we've still got that. The big thing is um, it's 25,600 ISO. Okay, so the um, low light capability is much improved, much better. Yeah, much better. yeah. a dual gain uh, as well. 60 frames a second in 4K. That was the other thing. The original pocket camera was HD only, mm -hmm. but it was uh, 30 frames. So we wanted to go up to that. There's a high frame rate button on the back, so you can immediately go to the high frame rate if you want. And if I want to go even higher, then I guess I have to reduce a little bit the resolution. And yeah, you can do windowed uh, HD, and you can HD. do 120 frames a second in windowed HD. So it's got both a SD card and a CFast card slot on the in the side. It kind of operates like the it's running the Ursa operating system, so we get some benefits from that. We've got 3D LUTs built in, and you can bake them into the recording if you like as well. So you can load film looks and record directly. But also we've got uh, camera presets, um, we've got uh, meter data entry, all the other things that we have. Um, so you can actually record from one card to the other if they're both fast enough for the record format that you're recording. Um, but uh, generally, you'd probably choose the media based on what you're doing. The SD card is also uh, UHS-2, so you can put essentially three different kinds of media in the side. Nice, uh, but you also have enhancement on the other side of the camera. Yes, even as simple things in the design, like you can rotate those around. On the uh, cinema camera, yeah, they were just opened up and they were kind of in the way, so you can move those out of the way mm -hmm. and rotate them. But for anyone who's a pocket cinema camera customer, they'd see the full-size HDMI connector and probably cheer, because little things like that that matter. But if you go down lower, you can see that we've got a... Okay, right here. We have a uh, camera-style locking DC, two-pin DC power connector. Um, and we've also got a XLR, an XLR connector on the bottom that's got phantom power. So you can plug in an interview mic and record you know, uh, with a Straight conventional away. mic. My philosophy was with the designers, if this is the camera you go and shoot other people with, this is the camera you shoot yourself with. Okay. So you go out as a lone operator. And that's why, if you look at the ergonomics, we've done a whole lot to have a record button on the front and a tally light on the front so you can record. So the tally is right here? There. Yeah, there's no media okay. in it. The yeah. guys didn't give you any media. But So you can record yourself. There's two really nice microphones. In fact, there's actually four microphones built in. So we've upgraded the audio, upgraded the sensor, upgraded even the connections. We've got a USB-C expansion port on the side. And what it is, it allows you to, uh, at the moment, um, you can do a lot of things with it, but at the moment, um, what we've supported in the Blackmagic operating system is mounting a, uh, a like an external hard disk. So you can plug an external hard disk into this and record straight to it. So if you plug in a flash drive, you can record to the flash drive and then you just unplug it and take it to your editing system and load your media and you don't have to do any of the card shuffling. Again, it's about openness, it's about not needing to buy expensive peripherals. On the OSI, you do have to buy an SSD recorder if you want to you know, record on SSDs. On this, you can just plug any meter in, and those little flash drives are actually quite fast. The, the camera itself is very simple, yeah. and yeah. actually you don't need many accessories in order yeah. to operate it. So it's going to be 1295 which is $300 more than the original pocket camera, but DaVinci Resolve uh, Studio is 295 So essentially, the difference in price is the full DaVinci Resolve Studio comes with it. So we have larger sensor, same um, lens mount, yep. massive screen mm. in the back to help with focusing, a lot of buttons here to help yeah. with uh, operations. And some custom buttons on the top too. You can actually uh, custom assign, program you those assign. buttons, assign, you nice. assign them, yeah. Full HDMI, microphone of course, and headphones here, yeah. and also XLR Phantom uh, powered 
connector and USB-C if we want to connect just any any media. Uh, yeah. media for and also, also it does HDR recordings as well. So it is, you know, it's 13 stops of dynamic range and HDR and uh, obviously a great ISO now. Obviously we've got some great sensitivity. In terms of codecs, recording codecs, it keeps the older one like in... Yeah, so ProRes obviously we do RAW and we do uh, ProRes and, uh, and we can add other codecs, of course. Um, so I think you, you know, if you're doing like uh, RAW in 30, uh, 60 frames a second in 4K, you probably want to use the CFast cards mm. or the external media. Uh, but you can even put the SD cards that you used on the original pocket camera and you can record HD them. You can still run mm, sure. full frame because it'll, it'll run a full frame and then scale down to HD. So you get wonderful anti-aliasing. You can put that down to the SD card that you've always used. So you can use the same lenses and the same media across mm. from the pocket cinema camera, which was that, that link. Even the design itself, we used a new material called um, oh. carbon fiber polycarbonate composite. So we've even started to explore new materials because we wanted the, the thing to be very lightweight. Um, so we've been able to shave off hundreds of grams of, of weight I think the trick is you never quite know how it's going to be used, but you want to allow for every possible way it can be used because we're like a foundation that people can then explore, you know, using the camera in all different ways. It's, it's our place to, to yeah. allow possibilities and see what people do. Yeah. Grant, it looks like a great product. Well, thank Honestly you. Honestly speaking, that. I think when I see this, the only thing that I want to do is just grab it and go out and, and film. I know, so do I. I've got to wait until the day after the show before I can do it because, of course, I can't walk around with a product that hasn't been announced. So I have to wait until Friday. I literally run around Las Vegas with the camera myself. So I don't know how many cameras we've launched where I only get a chance to use it on Friday. Otherwise, the thing just has to be hidden in a, yeah. in a lab somewhere. And it's like, so it's our chance to play with it as well. So yeah. we're all desperately waiting to use it. Good. Thank you very much. Nice. It was a pleasure nice to, to talk you. to you again. Yeah. Nice to see and you. And thank you very much for watching.